Greetings, Nap Twisting Bedroom Producers. We talked about Roland T8 last time. I made a review because I'm a fan of cheap gear. I mean, the cheaper it is, the better. Cheap stuff basically means you will not wait for a paycheck to buy something, right? You don't have to wait for it. And nowadays, electronic gear in retail is scarce. If I use this word correctly, one day you see it, next week is gone, or the price just went up too much. And there's gotta be the one piece of cheap gear that I will rank higher than others. Say hello to my little friend, Donner B1. Say hello to my little friend! Look how beat up it is. It's because it was used every freaking day of my dull and dollless life. To me, gear that look new is flawed. It means it was never used for whatever reason and it's suspicious. My trusted donor was used a thousand times. That's why it's so vintage looking. I always thought that big and serious scenes are gonna be game changer in my workflow. You know, when you finally bought your dream scenes and you think to yourself, finally, this is going to make my life so much easier. And then it's just not. I was there, fellow travelers. I tried a lot of gear and none of it was as useful as Donner B1. And also good sounding. And also, also cheap. Also, 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 it's a thing. I cannot live without anymore. Nowadays, you can barely find analog mono synths in this price range. Yes, you can get your hands on Behringer version of ancient Roland acid machine, but good luck programming it. You will regret that, I have a video about it. And also, no keyboard. As of spring of 2024, Donner B1 is going for a hundred bucks. It was 200 when it came out, and even then it was a steal and a bargain. In 2024 there is no direct competitors to B1. I mean, if you find an analog synth with a sequencer and a keyboard for a hundred except Uno synth, no not from Chinese flea market known as Amazon etc, please let me know. Una is also fun, but it was and still costs about 70 bucks more. In my area it's actually twice the price in 2024. Una have some other functions like noise generators and LFOs and all that jazz so it can be a good choice, but for me personally I never was a fan of the sound. I'm sorry, Una is not made for acid in my opinion. It's more for LFO oscillator twisting crowd. It's time to review this bad boy, Donner B1. Analog mono bass synth with sequencer, keyboard and 5 pin MIDI ports. Let's do this. Creating sequences on a bass synth for whatever reason was always a problem. Original Roland bass synth was so cryptic that you basically needed a cheat code to begin to use it. Cheat codes being a manual, of course, because there was no way for a regular person to decipher the cryptic logic. Behringer followed suit and re-released the OG with the same god-awful logical void in a place of regular UI. On Donner B1, the tables are turned. It's so easy. To make a sequence that it's almost impossible not to understand how to do it. I mean, all you have to do is to press Rec Edit button and then press the musical keys 16 times in a row. 
If you mess something up, go back using arrow buttons. Blue lights will be your guide. After you're done, hit rec edit button again. Done! It's that easy. And if you want to erase and start from scratch, press clear. Also, in the latest update some options was added and now white light on a musical keyboard show you the note you pressed or chose. You know, just in case if you, like me, have problems with understanding notes by ear. so many functions made easy and in seconds. And, in fact, latest update brought us song mode. And I know, I know what you think. Oh my god, another song mode so poorly implemented that it's barely usable. Not today. Song mode is too easy here. By the way, on official site you can get a manual on how to do it, but it's so poorly written that only made things look more complicated. Press button button twice. Press first musical key. Use the arrow to choose a sequence. Press another musical key. Rinse and repeat. That is it. Everything is automatically saved even if you turn the power off. Press button twice again to exit. Done. Now press place. Press the keys to choose the pattern you want to be played. If you want to make all of your sequences to play one after another without you switching the steps manually, press one button, left A sharp, and it's all done. Actually, that's some kind of free or free programming irony here. You have to know that, otherwise you will never guess it. But hey, we have a manual. Now to the sound settings. I know. Y'all waited for me to twist the knobs. Well, here we are. One oscillator. Square and not square. Nothing special. And this VCO knob is nothing but a tuning device. Oh, by the way, tuning in here is no problem. Device auto-tunes itself before every power on. And the knob have this tiny stop notch inside. You know, you stops when you reach the proper pitch. Of course, you can move it, but you have this. And a lot of scenes don't have it. Crave, I have it right here, don't have it. Roll on T8, as much as I love it, there's no this notch inside. Cool. Filter section consists of usual suspects. Cut off. Resonance. And depth. Then we have envelope decay. And accent. And that's about it. The accent works with a sequencer to make sounds a little bit more spicy. Works good, by the way. There's also hold, slide, and gate. And last but not least, in the world of Tatsuya Takahashi from Cork, the humble volume knob. And of course, an arpeggiator. Works like a charm. And have this hold function, which was so dearly missed on my Walker FM, my Walker Keys, and many other synths. Distortion here was a pleasant surprise. I have TD3 from Behringer, as you know, and distortion feature on that device sounds more like a fuzz distortion pedal for guitar. You know, the cheap ones. Here on Donner, distortion is tailor-made for synth purposes and always sounds good, at least to my ears. Every move of distortion knobs make you sound different. Also, it can add a lot to accent and glides very, very good. Let's see it in action. Delay function is not so common with other bass synths, and you have to use some external pedal, which is not cheap, 
and takes a lot of space for wires, etc. etc. Donner got us covered with perfect delay pedal built in. It's not a surprise if we take into account that Donner actually makes good delay pedals for guitars. Delay have three encoders or knobs, level, time and feedback. And all of them, even cranked up to 11, is not destroying your sound, only adding to it. And the time knob sometimes provides interesting effects. This kind of external delay pedal would cost you at least 50 bucks. Here we have it for free and built in from the factory. Also, it's not just a bass acid line thingy. It can play without adding slides like 303 does, notes is not short and you can actually play music. Before we move on, let's try our little friend as a mono synth. I mean, why not? After all, we have keyboard, so let's use it in this video game inspired slash plagiarized Electribe Jam. Of course we have MIDI in and out and I believe that MIDI out is true, it can be changed in options and of course this 5 pin MIDI gives us the, this urge to hook up a MIDI keyboard to it. I mean why not, Donner is so small it's half the size of the most keyboardless modules so we can use it as a module too. But note, there's a catch, there's only 3 octaves in this sense. And in my case, with four octaves, you know I have a MIDI keyboard, one of them is always silent, you know? If this one, this one, and this one works, this one will be silent. You can move the octaves back and forth, but still, if this one sounds, this one sounds too, this one sounds too, this one will be silent. So keep it in mind. If you can find free octave MIDI keyboard to it, that's the way to go. MIDI out, of course, is a must. First off, it add keyboard to any of your modules, like Crave or Volkas, and it's pretty compact. You can also mix sounds from module or groove box with analog sounds from Donner, why not? Second off, it can sync stuff. I mean, my tribe desperately needs some analog arts. Well, now I got it. Also, using Electribe or any other device of this kind. You can record any sequence from Donner B1 and save it actually. And play it later using VA oscillators in Electribe. You can even combine two sounds, but to me it's always been kind of overkill. You know, using daisy chain of midis and sync cables, you can create a monster. Uh, months or combination, so to speak, with Craves MIDI through capabilities, it's even worse or better. Me personally, I gave it a try, 
but then abandoned the idea. Abandoned the idea. My English suck, I know. Because I wanted more freedom to move the devices in and out of the room, taking it outside, shoot a review, and so on. We can use it as a MIDI keyboard through USB-C or 5-pin if you have the kind of audio interface. We are not going to spend a lot of time here. It works too fine. No drivers or control centers needed. Hello, Arturia! And of course, you have dedicated software to update the device and work with complicated settings like sync or MIDI clock. No problems with it whatsoever. Actually, it saved me a lot of time because I refused to learn button combinations you can use to access those settings without the PC. You know, when you have to hold some button and turn the power off, you know, I just used an app. Line import or auxiliary in or aux in, I don't know how to pronounce that. You know, line import is present and it can be very helpful at times. When I used it as an ACID station with RD6, I didn't want to use another mixer channel for that. I wanted it to be simple. So I just plug a cable from phones to aux in and it's done. In those setups, another line import can be a lifesaver. Let me tell you. And of course, the port can work with bits from any audio source except microphones. They require so-called plug-in power, but that's another and very boring story. We're not gonna touch on that. Now to the cons. There was a pros, now the cons. They are pretty obvious. Small size always have big disadvantages. The keys is rubberish and a little bit wobbly, so it's not a virtuoso keyboard by any means. But let's be honest, none of us buy a mono bass sequencer to play Mozart. One can get used to it pretty fast and I was able to play some easy stuff on it with no problems. At least the keys are pretty durable and none of the keys are broken after years of heavy, heavy use. What really bugs me is the control keys. They are really, really small. Oh wait, I take it back. No problem with the keys. It's the letters under the keys. They are black on dark gray. Yes, the keys lights up, but not the letters under them. You really got to write it down to your muscle memory or have a very good lighting. Can you try to see it? Uh-huh. Next on the list of cons is the power supply. First off, it's proprietary donor power supply and I don't know if you can use any other power brick without the risk of damaging the device. Second, the device does not support batteries and don't have a built-in one. It's a shame because B1 is so portable that you want to take it outside and basically everywhere with you. After all, isn't it the whole thing about portability? Of course. None of these flaws are deal breaker. I wish Donner had two spin offs models. You know, first, let's call it B0, would be the same size, letters, etc., but it would include built in battery. There's enough space for that, I believe. And Walker Light speaker. I don't know, maybe, why not? Second one, let's call it B2, would have three octaves, better keys, and better controls. Mind you, Donner have a whole range of MIDI keyboards like that. So form factor wouldn't be an issue in these cases. I would love to see a model with built-in drum sounds as Roland T8 to make it on the go as a production machine. Now let's put it to the test in this hardware sync analog jam. In this gem, oh my god, crazy commutation through Walk FM, TR8, and even Crave MIDI through Dear God. Let's check it out.
anyway, after all, being said and done, there is nothing remotely close to done or be one in my opinion, especially in its price range. It's well made hardware sequencer, usable MIDI keyboard, and good analog mono things, all in one compact package for only two or one hundred dollars. It may seem too good to be true, but it's a reality. I hold it in my hands. While there may be some no-name knockoffs available from unknown factories on Amazon, purchasing them is always a gamble. With Donor B1 there is no risk involved. The Donor B1 is a high quality, durable and most importantly kinda unique synthesizer that is highly capable. It's an original product that should not be overlooked. One of a kind that you simply cannot miss. Well, screw that. Screw all that fancy marketing words. Uh, actually, I don't sell anything to anyone and not sponsored by anyone, thank God. I love B1, cause it saved me so much time and trouble. For whatever reason, everything on here worked. You know, it's like a free or free song mode, but backwards. From software to every last option or cable input, all of this was there for me when I needed it. Easy programming, yep. Song mode that's easy to use, yes. Aux in, you got it. Sync that works every time, no problem. Analog sound in a tiny box, got it. MIDI for hardware, no questions. Distortion and delay, right here. It's hard to describe this feeling, and maybe it was just my case, but I don't care. You know that feeling? That feeling when someone is there for you? I felt it with Donner, and I'm sure you have your own love stories to share in the comments. See you next time. Bye.